good day students i am here to teach another literary term to you and that is a type of poem that is called ode o d e ode ode is a long lyric poem which is serious in subject elevated in style and elaborate in its stanzaic structure now let us understand each and every term related to ode first of all it is a long lyric poem okay it is lyrical means it is musical it can be sung it is serious in subject this is a very important component of ode that it deals with serious subjects and it is elevated in style the subject is serious and matching with the seriousness of the subject the style or the language the way the poem is written is also high in treatment and it is elaborate in its stanzaic structure the structure of stanzas the stanza arrangement of an ode is elaborate so it is a long lyric poem which is serious in subject elevated in style and elaborate in its stanzaic structure one more important thing about ode is that it is an address means the poet addresses someone or something or some natural phenomena in an ode and he generally uses the word to for example to the west wind to the evening to the evening star o to duty and so on and so forth so this word to itself indicates that the poem is an ode so an ode is an address either to a person it can also be addressed to a natural phenomena like the west wind or the evening the term is now used for a poem which is massive and public in its proclamation and pindaric in its classical prototype this is a definition given by norman maclean and the prototype was established by greek poet pindar you must have heard about the greek poet pindar and whose odes were modeled on the songs of the chorus in drama now what is a chorus in dramas there was a band of singers which was called chorus and pindar's complex stanzas were patterns in the set of 3 when the chorus moved in dancing rhythm from right to left then it recited the strophe when the chorus moved from left to right they used to chant the antistrophe and when the chorus used to stand still and chant the poem then it was called an epode so strophe antistrophe antistrophe and epode were the parts of pindaric ode now the regular ode or the pindaric ode in english is a learned imitation of pindar's form with all the strophes and antistrophes written in one kind of stanza and all the epodes in another type of stanza the typical construction may be conveniently studied in thomas gray's the progress of poesy so this was the regular type of ode and now we will see what is an irregular ode irregular ode was introduced in 1656 by abraham cowley who imitated the pindaric style and matter but disregarded the recurrent strophic triad he did not pay heed to uh, the style of strophe antistrophe and epode 
he allowed each stanza to find its own pattern of varying line lengths number of lines and rhyme scheme means he provided a certain amount of freedom to his odes and this type of irregular stanza like structured poem was called irregular ode it altered freely accordance in accordance with shifts in subjects and shifts in mood it has been the most common for the english ode ever since and <clears throat> the best example of uh, ode is wordsworth's great ode intimations of immortality it is a representative ode in english literature now pindaric pindar's ode were encomiastic it means that they were written to praise and glorify someone for example to glorify the winners of the olympic games the earlier english odes and many later ones were also written to eulogize eulogize means to praise something either uh, it could be a person like john dryden's ode annie killigrew or the arts of music or poetry for example alexander's feast if you remember we did alexander's feast and the subject matter of that poem is the praise of the art of music or the time of day for example william collins ode to evening in this poem william collins is praising the beauty and the calmness of the evening odes may also be written on abstract concepts for example thomas gray's ode hymn to adversity or william wordsworth's ode to duty now duty is an abstract idea abstract concept concept and wordsworth has written a poem on ode to duty romantic poets preferred the personal ode of description and passionate meditation which stimulated by an aspect of the outer scene and turns on the attempt to solve either a private problem or generally humane one now in such type of odes the person or a natural phenomena to which the ode is addressed is considered as a symbol of perfection and the poet pours out his feelings his complaints for example in ode to the west wind what shelley's ode to the west wind what does the poet do the poet complains of his own weakness to the west wind and he implores the west wind to make him a cloud or a leaf why because he wants the same strength as the west wind exercises on the cloud or a leaf so he considered the west wind as a symbol of perfection and he entreats the west wind to flow from his mouth means he wants that such rebellious poet should poems should come out of his pen which will um, make a revolution in this world the recent examples of ode are wallace stevens the idea of order at the key west now there is the horatian ode which was originally modeled on the matter tone and form of the odes of the roman poet horace and rather he was a critic in contrast to the passion and visionary boldness of pindaric odes horatian odes are calm meditative and restrained there are many uh, beautiful examples of ode in second year when you read romantic poetry so let us revise what an ode is an ode is a type of poem it is it is addressed to someone or something or any natural phenomena an abstract concept also it is a long lyric poem the subject of an ode is always serious it is elevated in style and elaborate in its stanzaic structure
थैंक यू